Good morning, brothers and sisters. I pray that you are well. Um, it is another day. Hallelujah. I'm just waking up. You know it. Got my smoothie. Mmm. Oh, so delicious. And I'm ready to go. Um, I wanted to read a little bit uh, from uh, Matthew chapter 11, which I'm, I'm going to read the verses that we all know, but I just want to read it and encourage you guys. And I'll probably be preaching to myself. Hallelujah. Uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He mentions rest twice there. And he doesn't say I'll give you, he doesn't say I'll give you rest as long as you keep doing A, B, and C. He doesn't say I'll give you rest as long as you try and maintain sinlessness, which is impossible. He says, come to me. And I will give you rest. He says, come to me. That's it. How do we come to him? We believe. Hallelujah. We believe that Jesus Christ died for all of our sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead for our justification. He tasted death. That's one of my favorite ones. It's in Hebrews chapter 2, I believe. He tasted death for every man. Sacrifice himself. And was risen again, hallelujah, on the third day. Uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. Like I said, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the, excuse me, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Hallelujah. God is so good. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. Whatever you're going through, I just want to encourage you that whatever you're going through, He is there 100% all the time. Your condition, um, us falling into sin, um, getting angry, stealing, whatever it is, Our condition, our emotions, us falling into, us um, making mistakes, basically, none of that causes God to back away from us. None of that does. It might cause us to shrink away, as it also says in Hebrews. Don't shrink away. Come boldly to the throne of mercy and receive grace having full assurance of faith. Why? Because God, when he looks at us, he's not looking at our ability to handle our emotions, to walk perfectly obedient or sinless because it is impossible. That is why Jesus Christ came. Hallelujah. And he's not looking at anything that we do and saying, okay, you've done A, B, and C, I will draw close to you. No, that puts the burden upon us. That points to us. That preaches us and not Christ. None of that determines how close God is to us. No. It can damage our conscience and cause us to shrink back, like I said, but it doesn't mean it does it never means that God is far away. Our fellowship with God is never broken. He lives inside of us. He can't live inside of us and then we make a mistake and he's like, well, I guess I'm going to go out over here. No, he's always right here. Always. We are forever joined unto him and he is joined unto us forever. It is a done deal. We are safe and sealed until the day of redemption. He has given us the earnest of the spirit as our inheritance. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14, Ephesians 4, 30, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 21, nope, verse 22, almost, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, who hath also sealed us 
and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. He sealed us. He is with us. When He looks at us, He sees His Son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, and I believe it's also that in chapter 2. Yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. It's funny because I was going to read a bit of chapter 4. Um, and I've also been reading chapter, I've re been reading 3, 4, and 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 4, and 5 uh, several times this last week. I'm really enjoying it. But 2 Corinthians chapter 2 says in verse, let's start at 14. Now thanks be to God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ. We triumph in Christ always. Praise the Lord. And maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death and the other the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. We are a savor of, we are a sweet smelling aroma of Christ unto God. That is also somewhere else. I can't remember where it is. Forgive me. I just remember that part in Second Corinthians. But we are a sweet smelling aroma unto God because of Jesus Christ. We cannot damage that drawing of Christ in us, drawing God close. We cannot damage that or cut that off. So don't think that you can. Reckon true, re believe, approve that which is excellent, which is to agree with what God says, is that we have peace with God. Hallelujah. Jesus says, come unto me and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. Come unto me and I will give you rest. Whatever we're going through, whatever you're going through, loss of, a, of, a, of an animal, Dear sister, you know who you are. I'm praying for you. Um, a lot of us have been through that. And of course, you are not alone. You always have Jesus Christ with you. And he's going to comfort both of you. As another brother has already encouraged you, I just want to second all of that. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. A loss of a loved one. Uh, trouble at work. Uh, trouble in, in your family. Uh, trouble with friends or coworkers or... Um, the warfare in the mind, whatever it is, Christ is already there. He has already won the battle. Hallelujah. He has already triumphed for us. Hallelujah. He has already completed everything. And he is our good shepherd and he is drawing us. He is bringing us further into satisfaction in him as we just rest and trust that he is going to do it. We don't need to help him along. If we think that we need to help him along, we're going to get caught in legalism and condemnation and fear. And we're going to see if we think that we have to help God along and we make a mistake, we will shrink back thinking that we need to clean ourselves up, then come to God. Do you see that? Because the law, is, the law does not preach Christ. The law is just the ministration of condemnation and death, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. If we think that we need to help God along, we think we, we're basically, to me, I feel like we're shooting ourselves in the foot. We all do this though. God does not need our help. He is, he is sovereign. He is mighty and he is all powerful and he is the one who's doing everything on our behalf and has done everything on our behalf. Jesus Christ is our good shepherd. We're just sheep. We're just his sheep. Hallelujah. We know his voice. He knows us and we are known of him. He draws us in. He leads us. He lifts us up on his shoulders. When was the last time you saw a shepherd go up to a sheep and the sheep just like, stood up and put itself on the guy's shoulders <laughs> and was like, all right, I've done my part. Can you bring me in? <laughs> and the shepherd's like, yeah, sure thing. That was a little weird because I've never seen a sheep do that. You see, oh, that's a joke, obviously, but like, do you see all of these pictures point to the fact that Jesus Christ is our shepherd and he lifts us up and puts us on his shoulders. He lifts us up and strengthens our inner man. He comforts us. He gives us peace. He gives us rest. We do not, 
work to enter rest. No, we just believe that Christ is going to do it and trust at his perfect timing, everything is going to happen. Hallelujah. Um, David Benjamin did a video the other day talking about Hebrews chapter 6. Um, and uh, I read a little bit of that the other day. And me and my wife talked about it. And the Lord just, the Lord started preaching through me. And that was great. Um, uh, Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them through faith and patience. Inherit the promises. Uh, verse 11 also says, And we desire that every one of you do, this, do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. It's standing in the truth. Hallelujah. It's standing in the blood of Jesus Christ. It's standing knowing that he's going to do it. And when it says be not slothful, it's not talking about works at all. Again, because that is against the theme of the Bible, the entire Bible, the theme of justification and rewards and inheritance. It's all by grace. So you cannot take words and apply law to them and, and, uh, and apply them as a demand on yourself because it is, it is against the theme of the word when it comes to grace for everything. But it is, in a, is it, it is in accordance with the word. If we're putting demands on ourselves and trying to put ourselves under the law and bondage, it is in accordance to the word because Paul constantly says, don't do that. <laughs> Paul is constantly saying, we are dead to the law. We are dead to ourselves. We are dead to the world. You cannot put a burden on that. Hallelujah. But anyways, for that, that sloth, uh, be not slothful, that is just, to me, standing in faith. Okay, uh, David Benjamin did a much better explanation of that. Go check that out. But what I was looking at, I wasn't looking at that part of the verse. Be but followers of them through faith and patience inherit the promises. We have believed, yes? Hallelujah. We have we have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and his resurrection. We have placed our faith in him. So we have the faith part. What else is there? Patience. Patience. And that's where a lot of us tend to, at least for myself, shoot myself in the foot. Is I believe, but my impatience causes me to start looking around and see what do I need to do? How do I need to move this along faster for God? I don't. I need to have faith and patience. <laughs> um, so that was a really encouraging message for me. <laughs> um, just to see that we have faith and as we walk by faith, we just wait on God. We wait on God because God's doing it all. Hallelujah. Um, and verse, I'll close this out. I know this video is a little all over the place. I might listen to it back to see if it's edifying at all and we'll see what happens. But 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. Also, it was an encouragement to me, I read this last night again with my wife, um, and she really liked these verses, and I also like them because it's just an encouragement. The things that we go through, it's okay. We're going to make it. Hallelujah. All right. And there's something happening in us during our trials and tribulations that is so much more glorious than we can ever imagine. Until we see him face to face, we won't understand it. But by faith, we trust. Hallelujah. Okay, so verse 16, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Our pain, our struggles, our mental fatigue, all of this, our outward man perishes every day, yet our inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Now, a lot of us might be going through things that don't feel so light. I'm sure we can all agree on that one. I do this sometimes when I'm agreeing with someone and I don't want to talk. I'm just like... <laughs> um, but we might not feel that it's like a light affliction. But in the grand scheme of things, when you put it in perspective of eternity... With our life right here before Jesus coming is but a little blip on the radar. Not in terms of insignificance, but what I mean is in the grand scheme of things, the affliction we are feeling now is light and we know that through it, again, it worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. That's the thing is, whether our affliction is light or it's heavy or it's medium or it's spicy or it's mild, whatever it is, our affliction has a purpose. 
okay? It is working in us. It is Jesus Christ is being wrought within us. Jesus Christ is being revealed to us through our afflictions as we step back and not try to handle the afflictions and the pain and the emotions and all of this stuff and these situations. We don't try to control them. We step back from them and we say, Lord, handle this. Hallelujah, my God is greater. I will raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. The blood of Jesus Christ has justified me, not me controlling any of these things. The blood of Jesus Christ has secured my inheritance. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus Christ has done everything for me. Jesus, you are the good shepherd. I put all of this in your hands. I don't want to deal with it. I am far too weak to handle it. I need you and your life in me to handle it. And Lord, I need your comfort and I need your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Whoever's listening, I pray that for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our trials, our affliction has a purpose and it doesn't make it particularly easy to go through. But if we know that our affliction has a purpose to draw us closer to Christ and rest in, this, in our sufficient, sufficiency, which is of God, our sufficiency is of God and not of ourselves. We have more Christ after these things. And to me, that helps slow down the wheel in my head of thinking, you've got to do all this stuff to handle this. No, but if I know that my affliction, everything I'm going through has a purpose to bring me more Christ, to reveal to me more Christ, to bring me more comforts from God, hallelujah, then it gives me a bit more strength. It's Christ in me that is that strength to just let it go and be like, all right, man, you're going to handle it because I don't want to. I am weak. I am unable to hold anything. I'm, I'm, I'm unable to even feed myself. Lord, put the food in my mouth and chew it for me. I can't do nothing. And the, the thing is though, he wants to. Hallelujah. That's how good of a shepherd he is. That's how awesome our high priest is, Jesus Christ. He wants to do those things. Verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, our situations, our emotions, our affliction, our turmoil, whatever, all, all of that stuff. But at the things which are not seen, Jesus Christ, hallelujah. For the things which are seen are temporal, they're temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So that was a comfort for me. Um, and my wife liked those verses as well. Because uh, these seasons are tough, guys. Um, man, it's getting, it's getting wild out here, am I right? <laughs> but how long have we been saying that? Anyways, um, I pray this message was a blessing to you. I feel like this last bit, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I feel like that's what I actually wanted to say. Um, I got a little sidetracked in the middle there. Um, but anyways, yeah. God bless everyone. Uh, and uh, let's just close it out with prayer, yeah? Uh, Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you having full assurance of faith. We come boldly to your throne of mercy. And we ask, oh God, oh God, we need your grace right now. Hallelujah. And we know that we have it. That's the beauty of this, Lord, is we know that we have it. We have received your grace, Lord, and we ask for your comfort. Lord, we ask for your presence, Lord. We ask for your hand to move in and around us, Lord, that you would handle every one of our situations and circumstances and every one of our emotions, Lord, that you would handle it, that you would, that you would move in such a way that we would that we would sing praises unto you, Lord, that we would know that it is the hand of God that is moving on our behalf, that it is, it is you in us, hallelujah, that is handling everything for us, Lord, that we would stand in full assurance of faith, knowing that we are justified by the blood of Jesus Christ and nothing else, by our faith in the blood of Jesus Christ and nothing else. Lord, I pray that we would, we would just rest knowing that you are going to handle it. Father, help us to rest knowing that you are going to handle it, knowing that you are a good, good father and you love to take care of your children. Lord, that we don't need to bring anything to the table except our faith and we sit down and there is a feast prepared for us in the presence of our enemies. And Father, we thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ to come and save us. Hallelujah. For all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. And Father, thank you that we are sealed forever your children the moment that we believe. We are children of God by our faith in Jesus Christ, Galatians 3, 26. And like I said, Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 says that you have given us 
the earnest of our inheritance until the purchase of the redem uh, the redemption of the purchased possession. Excuse me, Lord, you have given us the Holy Spirit, and it is it is in us, and it has sealed us. Hallelujah! The Spirit of God has sealed us, and it will not ever leave us. Hallelujah. We cannot remove it from us and nothing else can remove it from us. We can rest in the blood of Jesus Christ knowing that it has done it all. So thank you, Father, for everything. And we know, Jesus, as we come to you, you will give us rest. It is a promise. This rest is a promise. So we come to you, Lord, and we say our, we are heavy, we are heavy laden. We are burdened, Lord. We give these things to you and we say, Lord, handle it. I don't want to do it. I am weak. <laughs> Lord, take care of it and do it for us. Hallelujah, because you are the good shepherd and that's who you are. Thank you for interceding for us on our behalf always. So we praise you and we thank you, Lord. I pray that you would comfort my brothers and sisters, that you would refresh them and renew them in their inner man. Although our outward man may be perishing day by day, our inward inner man is being renewed. That you would comfort them and give them everything that they need, Lord. That you would speak to them in a very personal and intimate way. And that they would see how much you love them. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. All right, God bless you. I'll take care.